All right. Good morning. Can you all see my uh, screen? Yep. Looks good. Great. All right. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to be talking to all of you today about our new uh, AO add-ons. Uh, just a little bit of putting it into uh, perspective, particularly for those who uh, may not be familiar with all of DCS's uh, product portfolio. Uh, 3D CS variation analysis is kind of the key uh, foundation. Uh, it simulates both product and process variation and allows engineers to analyze manufacturing processes and product design uh, to be able to uh, determine how, what the quality characteristics, dimensional quality characteristics of the final assembly will be. Uh, in this, in our variation analysis programs, you write a model where you put in the part tolerances, the assembly processes we call moves, uh, and product measures. And then using Monte Carlo simulation, we can predict uh, quality issues. And then through changing tolerance process, we can fix these issues and reduce the variation as we show before. At the bottom of the screen here, when we started, we had some mean shifts and we had excessive variation. By changing the product and or process, we can uh, go from red to green. So that's our basic, the basic package. Uh, in the AO, uh, we have the FEA compliant modeler. Uh, this is a finite element meshing with the Monte Carlo simulator to, and to, 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 to combine traditional tolerance analysis with the added gains of, of finite elements. So we can determine mo a lot more and, and dive a lot deeper. We can determine the effect of clamping and clamping forces. We can add gravity or other field events and uh, also it includes the product stiffness, the local product stiffness, which all can affect the dimensional quality. For this version of AAO, we have a new uh, feature called the sequence optimization. Uh, this is what we're going to spend most of this morning on. Our goal is to reduce lead and launch time by eliminating uh, and or at least minimizing the manual joint and clamp sequence studies that have to be done at the start of production. Uh, we'll do that by determining the optimal sequence of clamping or joining from the, your candidate set so that you can produce your assemblies as close to nominal as possible uh, at the beginning of production, given the variation from design gap heart tolerances, and what we'll show as the seminar goes on is the impact of the order with which you join or clamp matters. When we talk about joining parts, we're talking about uh, it could be spot welding or riveting or bolting. And then uh, because they're discrete events, the order with which you weld, rivet, or bolt could affect the assembly uh, dimensional variation. And we'll show you that in uh, some of the, mo in a model that we are uh, going to cover. If you have the incorrect sequence, uh, you can have a, a, a number of issues. You can have too much variation, which is what most people think of as uh, in uh, DCS doing variation studies, but it also can result in significant mean shifts, as we'll show later. When we have a, just having a mean shift, that can result in a couple of adverse things. It can drive the percent out of spec to be quite high, as we show in our this is a histogram of production we're showing on the left-hand side. Uh, just with the mean shift, you can see we have a lot of red. That's uh, percent out of spec. It also, as if anybody who's done uh, CPK or PPK, process capability studies, knows that mean shifts away from nominal really drive your statistics in a negative way. What we're trying to do is reorder the joints so that we can get the mean where it needs to be, or at least as close to it as possible, and reduce variation 
which will help us get everything in spec or at least as close as possible. And it will improve our process capability indices like PPK or, or CPK. So that's kind of our goal. Uh, now, I, in my time at, uh, at, at OEM, I, I, about twice a year I would be called into a plant where we had a variation problem and or a mean shift problem uh, at startup production, and I would be asked to help them re-sequence the order of the joints. Uh, that typically took, uh, we were doing it in a plant, so I had to have uh, people, I had to have material, and I had some experienced operators. And we're trying to do this while we're going fast while launching a car. And so it was a, it was, it was a problem. Uh, if possible, we could do it in CAE, but uh, as we're going to show, there, there was no specialized software, so it required uh, significant time and resources to, to set up and run, and frequently I, I, we would just do it in the plant. Uh, so anyway, this is what we're trying to do is solve this business problem. Avoid the manual sequence studies by getting the best sequence going in at the start of production so that we don't have to reorder at a time when we're really quite busy. Uh, it is a complex problem. Uh, one of the issues is the number of, com if you're uh, given a number of joints, the number of combinations can be quite high. Uh, if you have five, it's really, if you have N joints, there are N factorial combinations. So if we have five joints, the sequence we can choose to put them in, there are 120 different sequences. Just remember, five factorials, five times four, times three, times two, times one. Uh, if you have 10 joints, there's about 3.6 million combinations, 15 spot welds or 15 uh, rivets. You've got uh, 1.3 times 10 to the 12th. That's a uh, 1 million million. Or and if you have 20 joints, uh, and we'll show one that's a little bit bigger than this later, uh, you've got two times a million times a million times a million joints. Uh, what we've tried to do is use a, a unique dynamic pro programming approach to help search the design space, the solution space, quickly uh, so that in a small number of runs, we can find a great solution or the optimal solution. So for five joints, instead of 120 combinations, we're going to search 11, but we're going to be very clever about how we search those for 10 joints. Sort of 3.6 million, we'll do it in 46, and 15 joints, we'll do it in about 106, et cetera. So we're trying to be efficient as well as be effective. Um, and how we do this is, again, we're going to use a dynamic programming approach. What you put in are your measurement points, your cl clamp or joint join locations where where the spot welds and or rivets and or bolts are. Uh, we'll put in some tolerances. Any design gaps you have, that'll all come in in, in the design. Then the optimizer will work by searching uh, among these different sequences to find the best uh, clamp or joint sequence. As we show on kind of in the picture on the right hand side, we're looking for our measures, our variation. So we want variation to go down. So we're, these bars are, are the smaller is better. Our goal is to go from, uh, from a high variation to low variation. Uh, we all, as I will talk about uh, it, it, towards the end of the seminar, uh, we'll also talk about the impact of travel distance. What we don't want to do is have the operator moving left to right, left to right, and, and driving productivity down. So we can track travel distance uh, in red, and again, with the goal of having that uh, to be driven to a small uh, number so that we can get productivity up. So we want variation to be low, productivity up by making the travel distance down. So everything lower is better. All right, with that, I, I, it's best to describe how this works with an example model. And for that, I wanna uh, turn the presentation over to uh, my friend and colleague, Maria. <laughs> 